Hi, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about seven autistic authors I think you should be checking out. You may or may not know that April is Autism Acceptance Month, so I'm going to be posting lots of autism related content in this month, but I'm trying to keep it bookish as well because I feel like the book community could really do with some more autistic representation and autistic voices out there. So this video is going to be recommending seven autistic authors that I have tried and absolutely loved and I think you should be checking them out. The first author that I'm recommending is one that you probably have heard about because she has been everywhere at the moment with her middle grade books and that is Elle McNichol. She is the author of A Kind of Spark and Show Us Who You Are. A Kind of Spark came out a little while ago and Show Us Who You Are is her latest release. They're both middle grades, they're both contemporaries but Show Us Who You Are has more of a pre-dystopian, slight sci-fi vibe. A Kind of Spark is about a young girl named Addie who finds out on a school trip that witches used to be killed in her village and that they probably were neurodiverse or vulnerable women, much like her and her sister, who are both autistic. So she begins a campaign to get a memorial for these witches. Show Us Who You Are is about a young girl named Cora whose brother works for a tech conglomerate called Pomegranate. Pomegranate is creating an artificial intelligent hologram where you can go and meet celebrities and deceased loved ones. She gets asked by the creator to be interviewed so that they can start to map neurodiverse brains because she is autistic and starts to see that there's something sinister going on at Pomegranate. So I think Elle McNichol is amazing. She's doing a lot to advocate for neurodiverse stories and neurodiverse authors and her two books are absolutely fantastic. My personal favourite is Show Us Who You Are. I would highly recommend them if you love a middle grade or if you love a really good heartwarming story. I think both of them do the job. Next up is Helen Huang, who is writing the Kiss Quotient trilogy. The final book for Heart Principle comes out really soon, but you already have the Kiss Quotient and the Bride Test. The Kiss Quotient I can't show you right now because I've lent it out to my mum. The Bride Test I haven't read yet, but I'm really looking forward to reading that one. These are neurodiverse romance stories. So the Kiss Quotient and the Bride Test both have autistic main characters and the Heart Principle, I believe, is a character who has OCD, but I, I can't quite remember. But Helen Huang herself has autism and it, they are really great representations. The Kiss Quotient is the first book in the series, obviously. The first book is about a woman named Stella who works in the finance industry and has never really had a proper relationship that's lasted very long. So she thinks that the reason for that is that she's bad at sex. So she hires a male escort to teach her how to have sex. It turns into a fake dating situation where she asks him to fake date her so she can learn how to be a better girlfriend and they obviously start to have feelings for each other. The Ghost Quotient is a really great romance but it also teaches you a lot about autism and what it's like to be autistic in a relationship and I think it's a really great book to read if you're interested in what it's like to be in our lives and to know what it's like to exist in a world like us so I would highly recommend those. My next one is Talia Hibbert. You've likely heard of her books because they are incredibly well known. They are New York Times bestsellers, but she is the author of the Brown Sisters trilogy as well as many other previous romance books. The Brown Sisters trilogy tells the story of each of the Brown Sisters, Chloe, Danny, and then Eve. I've only read Eve, but the other two are on my TBR and I will be reading them really soon. Talia Hibbert has said that she thinks that all of her previous main characters were coded autistic, but that Eve is the only one that's autistic on paper at the moment. And Talia herself has said this because she discovered her autism diagnosis after writing many of these books. They are all kind of fun, fluffy, sexy romances. So if you love a good romance book with a lot of sex scenes, a lot of giggles, these are definitely ones to check out. They also cover a lot of different representation for different disabilities as well, because Chloe Brown also has a chronic illness. So I think they're really great if you're looking into getting into disability romance. My next author recommendation is someone you probably would have seen if you've been in the book community for a long time, and that is C.G. Drews, who wrote A Thousand Perfect Notes and The Boy Who Steals Houses, also known as Paper Fury on her blog and her Instagram. She is a wonderful person to go and follow on social media. I'd highly recommend it. She's very entertaining. And I've read A Thousand Perfect Notes and I absolutely adore it. Her second book, The Boy Who Steals Houses, has autistic representation in it. This one doesn't, but that doesn't mean it's any less worthy of being checked out. She is an autistic author, so you should still be supporting her work this month. A Thousand Perfect Notes is about a boy who is a piano prodigy but is being abused by his mother and it's about him meeting this new girl in town and how this new friendship affects his life and his relationship with his mother and his little sister. 
My next recommendation is Dara McNulty, who is the author of Diary of a Young Naturalist. Unfortunately, this is the only male author on my list as I know of. So if you have any male autistic authors that you would recommend, let me know down in the comments. Dara is an activist who is very passionate about birds and nature and conservation and this is a collection of his diaries throughout one year of his life when he's a teenager talking about what it's like to exist in his little world and I think it's a really great insight into what it's like to be someone who's very passionate about nature but he also gives a few little insights into being autistic especially because he lives in a family with lots of autistics so all of his siblings are autistic as is his mother his dad is the only one who isn't so I think it's a really great look at what it's like to grow up in a little new diverse family and it's a good non-fiction so if you are looking for a recommendation that's not fiction here you go. The next author I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce her name right but it is Chloe Lise or Lisa. Uh, she writes the Bergman Brothers series which is still ongoing. I've only read the first one which is not the one that has autistic representation but the second one which is out now does have autistic representation. These are I think they're indie published and they're really great raunchy new adult romances that I would highly recommend. Each one has a different disability representation as far as I'm aware so far at least. Her first book has a deaf main character who is the love interest and the second book I believe the main character is autistic and yeah they're really great fun romances and the first one is an enemies to lovers I don't know how the others go but I really enjoy them and they come very highly rated and my final recommendation is Esso Thomas who is the author of the Slug Queen Chronicles this is a middle grade book and it's one of those books where it's not said on paper that the character is autistic but to me it's very very clear she is and the author has confirmed that she is coded autistic and the author herself is autistic. This is a really fun middle grade in which the main character's little brother is taken over by a changeling and she has to go into like the fairy world to get her brother back and being autistic is actually a superpower in her little world and I really love that. It's really really great and I would highly recommend this for anyone who's got autistic children who might be feeling left out or different so that they can see that being autistic can actually be a great thing. So that was a really quick whistle stop tour of some authors who are autistic that I really love. If, if you have any other recommendations, let me know down in the comments, especially because I'm going to be filming at the end of the month autistic books that are on my TBR. So if you have any you think I should be adding to my TBR, let me know down in the comments. And that's only for own voices representation at the moment because I'm kind of done with <laughs> non own voices for a little while. I want more own voices recommendations in my, in my comments, please. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. If you've read any of these or you're going to read any of them, please do let me know. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more content from me. If you want to leave me a comment to let me know you are here, leave me a little rainbow emoji. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.